Sure, but don't let them charge you more than $40 a case. Fresh traveling salesman. Hello, Thelma. Say, listen, you'd better stop playing that piano or the boss will fire you. He can't fire me. I'm engaged here by the month and I've only been here a week. Well, you better not let him hear you saying that. Oh, the deuce of it. Thelma, you know I wrote a little song about you last night? Oh, go on. Yeah, you want to hear it? Mm-hmm. Sit down, I'll play it for you. All my life I have been thinking What's the future has in store for me? I smell cabbage burning. Cabbage nothing, it's the sheriff's cigar. <laughs> <sighs> I've been longing for a girl like you. Once a bashful, shy and true. Johnny, my supper's burning. Oh, don't go away, Thelma. Shut up, the cards tell everything. Thelma, wait a minute, I want to talk to you. It's a very good fortune. Hmm? You will get your wish. You notice that the Jack of Spades plays quite a synthetic part in your life. Say, will you tell, tell my fortune? You want your fortune yeah. told? All right, Sal. Shuffle the cards and tell me what you would like to know. Tell me when I'll get married. Oh. Sorry, but I don't see marriage in your cards. No? No, you see, there is the Ten of Clubs, which, according to the gypsies, calls a Scorpio to run into Virgo, leaving nothing but Capricorn. Capri what? Corn. Sheriff, she was right. I've had a corn for over three days. I think <laughs> it's going to be a bunion. <laughs> <laughs> Cut the cards, please. The jack of spades. That's very bad. That jack of spades was in my fortune, too? Yes, Sheriff. Only this time, the jack looks blacker. Say, why don't you call your shots? Where do you think you are, in a swimming pool? Cut. This looks very bad. 
Let me see your palmistry. What? Your palmistry. Why, madam, I'm surprised that you... Oh, come, come, come. Your hand. Oh, my palm. What is that sticking out of your collar? Uh, pardon me, my error. It's your head. <laughs> Say, hold that pose just a minute. Huh? Do you know you remind me of clay? Not Henry Clay. No, just the common clay, the kind they make the flower pots out of. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff, don't lay an egg. Is that compulsory? No, vegetable. I'll turn on the radio. I would. Pass me a glass of water, please. Is it fresh? I don't know. It's uh, never said anything to me. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. That's all right. Funny how often that Jack of Spades showed up today, ain't it? You know, I noticed that myself, Sheriff. It was very funny. Donnie, will you have some jello? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Station WYX. Folks, pardon the interruption. The police department have asked us to broadcast a warning. Strangler Dan has broken jail again. He is a dangerous criminal, and we ask you to keep a sharp lookout for all suspicious characters. We thank you. The program will now continue. Well, Strangler Dan better not show up around here. If he did, Sheriff, what would you do? I'd do my duty. They pretty well know who's Sheriff around these parts. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Sheriff, is that the horse pistol you raised from the colt? <laughs> Johnny, shut the door. Gosh, I feel funny. Well, now we can go ahead with the vittles. Folks, the latest police bulletin now gives a rough description of Strangler Dan. He is about six feet tall, heavy eyebrows, and when last seen, had a beard and mustache. He wears a soft gray cap. Look out for him. He may be in your neighborhood. Please stand by. came in through the back. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> Who's the proprietor of this hotel? He, he is. is. He is. I'm sorry, all our rooms are taken. 
Why, boss, number 13. Well, we'll try and fix you up. Johnny, show the gentleman to a room. Yes. Never mind. I want a cup of black coffee. You're Jack Spade. Shut off that radio. I don't like it. Where's the post office? Well, just down here, but... All right. I'll find it. What did he look at you for? How do I know? Sheriff, he's going to blow it up. Why didn't you arrest him? Yes, why? You, you can't around for drinking a black cup of coffee. Oh. <sighs> Gee, this is a bad night. I bet we have a storm before the morning. I've had to come out here for wood three times tonight. Gee, but it's spooky around here. What was that? Oh, just the wind closed the door, I guess. Don't be afraid, I'm here. I don't mind coming for wood when you're with me. Somebody walking, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's cap. Yeah. Somebody groaning. Look. We'll go and get the sheriff. Then why didn't you arrest him when he came in the room tonight? Well, uh, we sheriffs can't arrest a man unless he commits a actual crime in our county. Drinking a cup of black coffee is not a crime in the county. Oh, no. I suppose shooting a duck is a crime in the county. This is no time for joking. This is serious. Friends, there is now a reward of $10,000 Offered for the capture of Strangler Dan, dead or alive. All sheriffs are warned to be on the lookout and arrest any suspicious characters on sight. We thank you. There you see, you could have arrested him, even if he did drink the cup of black coffee. Oh, I'm so nervous. Why don't you men do something? Oh, shut up. Don't be foolish. Now, don't get excited. We men folks will handle the situation. Oh, Sheriff, 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 we saw, we saw. What? The, the man with the beard. I found his cap outside the barn. A stranger. Strangler Dan. Yes, his body is hanging in the barn. He shot himself. Ten thousand reward. Are you sure you saw him hanging? Yes. Then he'll have to reckon with me. Give me my hat. Come on. Go on. the body. It was right up there. It's gone. What's that? Oh! Ah, uh. oh. Open the door! It's a sheriff! Open the door! In the 
the name of the law. Let me out. Ah! What's the matter? Oh, somebody pissed me. Oh. That was me. Just wanted to be sure it was you. Oh. Oh, where's, where's the lantern, John? In here, but I got no matches. Oh, I got them. Let's light it. Oh. Oh, I don't like it, Doc. Something very mysterious here, Sheriff. I don't know it. But I'm nervous. That's right. Who locked the door? That's, That's what I don't here. know. This is Here's your gun. Under. Sir, that's what I'm doing around here. Well, what of it? Well, I've been doing a little exploring. Yeah? And I found this. There's a lot of people around here. Yeah. Well, I'll be darned. Bootlegger. Shh. Rum runner. Shh. Moonshiner. That's a lot. There's a lot of people around here. Say, you'll get 20 years for this. Isn't there some way we can fix this up? Say, what are you trying to do? Bribe an officer? Certainly not. How much you got there? Two thousand dollars. Well, I'll just take that for evidence. I'll take the evidence. Say, Stick up your hands. Stick them up. Who is this guy? What do you mean by interfering with an officer? Officer, my foot. That badge is a fake. You're a hijacker and he's a bootlegger. I've been watching him for a week. Well, who are you? There's who I am. Why, don't you know? He's Colonel Hackett of the Secret Service. 
Thanks. Would you have believed that the proprietor was the bootlegger? Right now, I'd believe anything. Say, Sheriff, put the handcuffs on these two birds. You bet your life, I should have. And you, Pete Monroe, a bootlegger, you could knock me over with a feather. Oh, shut up. Take him down to jail, Sheriff. How is it, strong? It ought not to be. We clean it out every week. Will wonders ever cease? The proprietor turns out to be a bootlegger, strangler Dan a hijacker, and the hired man a detective? Say, who are you? Well, believe it or not, I'm the Emperor of China. Oh, really? Ladies and gentlemen, I am to have the privilege of presenting to you each week the introductory foreword of the Lone Defender, the star of which is a dog, probably the most famous dog in all the world, Rin Tin Tin. No doubt most of you are familiar with Rin Tin Tin's history, how during the Great World War he carried dispatches through the firing line risking his life daily in order that he might do his bit for his country. Not all dogs could be as famous as Rin Tin Tin, but then every dog owner believes that his dog is just as brave, just as faithful, and just as loving. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we take pleasure in dedicating this picture to man's noblest friend, his dog. And now for the first chapter of our story, The Mystery of the Desert. Everything ready, Bert? Yes. Good right tidy sack on the burrow. Then we will go after I bid goodbye to Dolores. Partner, they might follow us into the desert again, so I'm taking no chances. In case something might happen to me, I've had the location of our gold mine engraved on the inside of this watch. You keep the watch, Valdez. Oh, thanks for the lunch, Miss Dolores. I wish you wouldn't go, Father. I'm afraid. So many strange things have been happening here lately. And the cactus kid is in the neighborhood again. Now don't you start worrying about me. But those men I saw watching the house yesterday. 
I'm not afraid as long as Rinty is with me. Stay close to him, Father, won't you? Take good care of him, Rinty. Uh, Rinty will bring your father safely back from the desert. Just as he has many times before.
Well, son, where'd you get the dog? Found the dog out on the desert. More than me. I found him on the desert with a man named Valdez. That's my father. Where is he? He gave me this watch. What happened? Where is he? He was ambushed. Ambushed? By who? He died before he told me. He... he... Tell the sheriff we've been held up again. We will. I'll tell him at once. Get a hold of the head, will you, Jack? What's the trouble? All held up again with the cactus kid, too. I recognize his voice and almost saw his face. Yes, and he robbed me of a thousand dollars. All nice, new, hundred dollar bill. Where did this happen? Down by the forks, right there at Arsenic Spring. Arsenic Spring. The cactus kid, all right. He did both jobs. Sheriff, you must get him. I'll give everything I own to the man who catches the murder of my father. You get your horse, Tom. You too, Jim. We'll get together a posse and we'll pick up the trail. We'll get him, miss. Thank you. 
What do you have, stranger? Uh, give me a little of that over there. Say, that cactus kid must be a pretty tough guy. I'd hate to meet him face to face. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah? Hundred dollar bills. Well, the guy on the stagecoach lost some hundred dollar bills. Sometimes, my friend, it is better not to remember everything you hear and see. From now on, I'm deaf and dumb. Ah, that is good. You keep the change. I do not think you will fight the dog anymore. That dog's vicious. Uh, I think it is better the small boy have the dog. Yeah? Well, who are you? It makes no difference. But I do not like to see small boy or dog abused by big man. He attacked me for no reason at all. Ah, maybe. Sometimes the dog is very smart. Come on, boy. Adios. Where are you going? I'm going to plug that dog. You fool! He was the blind man's eyes for years. He's the only one that knows the location of the mine. We've got to get him. Go get it.
Mr. Valdez. The cactus kid stole your dog. Harky says he's worth a million dollars. Thank you. And I reckon I was worked for it. 
tonight. <laughs> Say, do you call this working, cowboy? You know, I was just thinking. No. Take a look at that moon up there, boy. Gee, what a night to hit the trail. What do you say we quit and drift? Say, I'm just beginning to get the wrinkles in my belly ironed out. For the last two years, all we've been doing is wandering around. Why, we've hit every ranch in the southwest. Well, why not try the north? Say, how'd you like to see that Colorado country again, boy? Way up in them beautiful mountains, plenty of fishing, hunting. Now, there ain't no use in you painting pretty pictures, Sim Baldwin. This is a good outfit, and I'm going to stay right here till I either cash in or get fired. You mean you won't leave unless you get fired? It sure does. Now, cut out the moonin'. First thing you know, you'll be getting my feet itching. Then what's going to happen? Come on. Come on there, Baldy. What do you say, Sam? I uh, sure. Bear down on it. He always sings the right to the Adelaide's way. Back for the saddle on the floor. That stinky baby gave him and such a funny heat it till the roar of his feet and how he run. When the hill bells are gunning for the white shirt, folks all know He's a hyperloop-loop, super-gust man who's doing the right time, cowboy Oh, you cowboy, right time, cowboy, Joe He's an arm of the guard! Don't be in trouble! Don't be in trouble! Don't be in trouble! Don't be in trouble! Who went to Willie? Hey, you trying to get us in trouble riding through camp that way? No, of course not. Well, it sure looks it. Boy, I'm plenty tired tonight. Why don't you go on down and go to bed? I'll unsaddle your old stick for you. Hey, that ain't no stick. And how is it you're getting so accommodating all of a sudden? Oh, go to bed. Well, it looks mighty peculiar, but I'll take you up on it. Good night, baby. Silver, something tells me we're going to travel tonight. Ah, go lay an egg. Oh, you can lay. and you'll both be looking for a new boarding house. Boarding house? <laughs> Madhouse. Hey, which one of you started this? I did. He's crazy. I started this cockeyed rumpus. I think you're both crazy. Now pack up and get out of here. 
You're fired. Hey, you can't fire us. We quit. I said you were fired. We quit. Sure, we quit. What did you say? I lost it home as a molly, all this home for running at Brunner for the shop. Come on, let's get out of here. You pack that. More trouble. you so funny all of a sudden? I was just thinking how slick it worked. How slick what worked? Didn't you say that you wasn't leaving here unless you cashed in or got fired? Yeah. Well, you're too healthy to die, so I had to get you fired. Whoa. Do you mean to tell me that you've done that on purpose just to get us fired? Sure. Well, you say for two cents I just... Wait a minute now. You know, Dad busted well. You're just as anxious to travel as I am. Ah, oh, you're wrong this time, Sim. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. You know, I ain't getting no younger. And I got sort of a hankering for something solid. Gee, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's all right. I know where I can get a steady job down south away, Where everything's peaceful and quiet. Now, I'll tell you. You go ahead and ramble around for a while if you feel as though you got her. And when I get all set down below, I'll let you know. You just keep in touch with Bill Wolf over at the bar ramp. You ain't sore, are you, Ranny? Sore? <laughs> I wouldn't have worked for that buzzard another day anyhow. You know, Ranny, you're the best pal a fella ever had. Yes, and ain't nothing gonna change it, son. Well, I guess here's why we part company for a little while, Sim. Take good care of yourself, you old son of a gun. I will. Adios. Bye-bye.
Bad, bad. <laughs> Where's that letter? Come on, Ben, give me that letter. Odd doggy. That's sure from Randy, all right. Yeah, it looks like it's been over the United States and part of China. <laughs> Why don't you settle down so you get your mail once in a while? <laughs> yeah, but I made one more move, Ben. They wouldn't have had room enough to put the forwarding address on. <laughs> Granny getting married or something? No, but listen to this. I'm working at a place called Shadow Ranch. Sounds kind of spooky, don't it, huh? Sure does. It's owned by a girl. Can you tie that kid, me working for a girl? <laughs> Go on there, boy. That show sounds good. There's a buzzard by the name of Blake that's making it pretty tough for my little boy. I'm waiting word from her to step on him, but maybe I'll do it without waiting. The fireworks is due to start right soon now. Would you like to come down and set in the game, Sim? It would be just like old times. We haven't been together for a long time now, and I'd sure like to see you, your old pal, Ranny. Sure sounds promising, don't it? Figure on leaving us, Sim? Yes, sir, right away, if you don't mind. She kind of looks like Ranny needs me down there. We've been pals for a mighty long time. Yes, I know. Well, we're sorry to see you go, son. But your old job will be waiting for you if you ever drift back this way. That's mighty fine of you. And I sure appreciate it. Well, let's go on over to the house. Get something to eat and we'll figure out your wages. That sounds good to me. And if you need any more help, cowboy, just pop your old pistol. We'll be there. <laughs> okay, Benny. Boy, and I ain't had no trouble for a long time. I think oh, I got get my work. Maggie. Don't let that worry you, darling. We can get along all right. Couldn't just wait to stay, could you, Ranny? No, Mom. They're afraid of Blake. Granny, I'm beginning to think that our fight isn't worthwhile. Sure it is. Say, we ain't licked yet. Blake may run this whole county to suit himself, but now he's overstepped his hand. I'm going into Rawson and have a showdown with him tonight. No, Ranny. It's too dangerous. Say, do you think I'm going to stand around peaceful-like and let that buzzard make you sell out to him? Not by a jug full. I'm going to step on him. Randy's right, Miss Ruth. He needs stepping on. Say, Randy, do you mind if I go along with you? I'll skin the skunk and I'll let you tan his hide. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Maggie. You stay here with Miss Ruth. Randy, I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, shucks. Say, now, there ain't a thing to worry about. Is there, Maggie? Not a thing in the world. See? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wish Sim Baldwin was here. We'd sure have some fun with Blake and that bunch of sidewinders of his tonight. You all would like my pal. They don't make them any better. Well, good night, folks. Good night, Randy, me boy.
Well, did those two cow punchers quit? Yeah, they quit all right, Mr. Blake. But Danny Williams got all riled up. He's on his way to town right now to have a showdown with you. Hmm, a showdown, eh? Well, if it wasn't for him, I'd have had Shadow Ranch long ago. Can't we do something about it? I think so. Now listen. When Randy Williams rides into town tonight, I want you to see that he doesn't ride out again. All you've got to do is use your head. But it's got to appear as though he started the argument. Right. Now get a move on. As your attorney, don't you think I had better keep out of this? Getting yellow? Who oh, no. But this fellow Ranny Williams is pretty quick on the trigger. Get across the street, Joe. Up the line away, Tex. Why don't you look where you're going? You won't have to look where you're going if you don't keep out of my way. No. No. Well, you didn't get away with it that time, Curly. Where's Blake? where the Shadow Ranch is. Then we'll see Ranny. Sounds good, eh, son? Let's drift, partner.
in your town today, huh? Well, I reckon most everybody's gone to the funeral. Yeah, I passed him up the road there a ways. Say, brother, can you tell me where I can find a fellow by the name of Ranny Williams? He's forming a shadow ranch. You ought to know him. He was forming a shadow ranch. What do you mean? That's Randy Williams. They're planting up on the hill now. What happened? Got killed in a shooting scrape. Shot in the back. Son of a gun, you, you couldn't duck that one, could you? You know Mr. Williams? Yeah. Who owns this land? Why, I do. How much will you take for ten foot square, right here? Are you serious? How much? Oh, I guess about ten dollars will be plenty. I can't figure why you picked this spot. It isn't fit to plant a buzzard in. That's just what I want it for. A buzzard. Follow that umbrella. And remember, the road to Shadow Ranch is closed to strangers. Right. Did you bring that deed with you? Yes, sir. All drawn up as for your instructions. Come on with me. We're going to Shadow Ranch. What will you drink? This will be all right. <laughs> Sit 
Say, partner, did you know Ranny Williams? He was a friend of yours? The best I ever had. Mine, too. A very good friend. Who killed him? Do you know? Nobody knows. But it's a dangerous question to ask in Rawson. Yeah? Who makes it so dangerous? Maybe you can tell me the way to Shatter Ranch. What do you want at Shatter Ranch? I guess that's my business. Well, I'm making it my business. You don't say so. Yes, I'm telling you. Shadow Ranch. That's Miss Cameron, this document which transfers your property to my client, Mr. Blake, is fairly equitable. I drew it up myself. Now, if you will please sign on this line. Mr. Blake, I consider your visit here today an insult. But, my dear Ruth, you can't run this place alone. Thanks to you. You don't think I'd do anything to hurt you? Oh, no. But it seems rather strange that most of my cattle have disappeared, my cow hands driven away, and then Ranny Williams killed. Oh, I know it's all very unfortunate, Ruth, but why don't you let me help you? You know I've always cared for you, and if you'd... I think we have nothing more to say. You're the same stubborn little girl, aren't you, Ruth? Why don't you take a hint, Blake? You're as crooked as a ram's horn. Now get out of here. Thank you. Just let me know when you change your mind, Ruth. Here comes that puncher. I told Curly to watch him. Well, we meet again. This is Shadow Ranch, I take it. We take it right. Are you figuring on locating him? Maybe. It's a kind of a general outfit, cowboy. So I understand. If I was you, I'd just keep moving. I'll take my chances. Then we'll meet again. The praise will be mine, gents. Adios.
are you talking to them two kibbles down the road? Now, what mischief are you up to? Well, lady, you must have me wrong. Uh, what's the matter, Maggie? You're Miss Cameron, I think. Yes. Well, I just want to... I got a letter from Randy Williams quite a while ago. It'll probably act as an introduction. Then you're Mr. Sim Baldwin. Yes, ma'am. Have you heard about Randy? Yes, ma'am. Won't you come in? Thank you. traveled a long way, Mr. Baldwin. Would you care for something to eat? Yes, ma'am. I'd sure care a lot for it. The gully's not yet. Just somebody's eating right in the gypsy. Thank Fine, you. Maggie. Won't you sit down? Thank you. You know, I'm awfully sorry that I was late getting here on account of Randy. And if Blake gets my property with its water supply, he'll control the whole valley. It was very kind of you to offer to take Ranny's place. But I can't let you. You'd be marked for murder, too. I'm going to sell out and go away. Ranny wouldn't let you sell, would he? Neither will I. You'll let me stay, won't you, miss? I, uh, I can't pay you very much. That's all right. I'll be paid when I get the umbi that killed Ranny. Then what's our first move, Sim? Um, Mr. Baldwin? Sim will do. Kind of sounds more homelike. All right, Sim. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take a look around and sort of get my bearings. I'll go with you. All right. Find her to leave in charge. You let that puncher get through the shadow ranch. You see him? Why didn't you stop him? What are you trying to do? Argue with me? Oh, well, boy, did that I... It appears he's a friend of Randy Williams. And that means... It means that if he interferes with my plans, he follows Randy Williams. There's all that's left of 2,000 heads. I'm sure there were twice as many a week ago. Maybe some of them are straight on the lower rain. We got time to take a look before dark if you want to. All right, Mr. Foreman. We got your land over there, isn't it? Yes. And they must be my cattle. That's what I figured. Right quick, will you? Come on, huh? Better stay here. I'll be back in a minute. Be careful. 
careful, Sim. Looks like he'll rest peaceful like for a while. Let's drift. Badly. Oh, I knew this would happen. I shouldn't have let you stay here in the first place. It's all my fault. Sim, are you all right? Sim, are you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, I guess. This got grazed a little. I reckon that fall knocked me out. Oh, I'm sorry. It's funny those things happen that way sometimes. All right? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay now. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, Mom. I'm mighty sure I'm all right. Uh, I, I, I reckon we better go round up the rest of them cattle before it gets dark, don't you? All right. Well, come on. You got the finest body of water in this country here, do you know it? That river over there is a tip of a pretty spot. Oh, I'm I'm caught. You take your boot off, I'll fix it for you. Oh, can't you tap it on just the way it is? Oh. 
As I was saying, if you'd run that river through Mint Canyon, you could open up that whole back country. I'll get myself two or three cowboys, and we'll have this place running in full blast in no time. What do you think, Miss Ruth? I think you're splendid, Sam. Things seem different now that you're here. Well, let's start talk about this river now. Let's let's just figure on Mint Canyon and now you see that little spot right over there? You can make your cut look. Howdy, folks! Howdy, Cupid! wants to see you. Mr. Blake knows where to find me when he wants me. Mr. Blake ain't accustomed to people disregarding his orders. And that applies to you, too, sir. Oh, yeah? What am I, Baldwin? Now keep him up. No cause for alarm, Miss Cameron. Mr. Blake desires a friendly chat with Mr. Baldwin. Sure, that's all. You can't take him away. I won't let you. Man, say it, listen. Let go of me. Let go of my hand. Right down this way. No, you don't. No, you don't. Reach for the sky, you high hoodlum. Come on, stick him up. She's liable to shoot you. I seen that fat high heater round the house, and I knew devilment was afloat. Your hunch was right, Maggie. I'm much obliged to you. You answer to Mr. Blake for this. Mr. Blake's getting my answer pronto. Maggie, you better take Miss Ruth on home. Here's your gun, Sam. Right. Come on, darling. I hope he hangs him. I'm going to prepare my answer for Mr. Blake. Shove off. Come on, make it throttle. Come on, turn right around that tree there when you get in. Dan, what's the big idea? What's it to you? Get in there. Now you can stop right along there somewhere. Well, gents, this is just liable to be a little painful. You know, this room about having two feet near that big fat jelly fish. You know, I'd have blew his head off and he'd never know what to tell the tale. I tell you, this is inhuman. Come on, come on, get busy. Say, hey, don't you think you're going to get away with this, cowboy? Never mind the argument. Come on, you rooster, start moving. I won't stand for this. Come on, start moving. Get out of there. I'm embarrassed. You don't even know where it's at. Get moving. Stop right along there. Can't you do something? Oh, shut up. You're just digging your own grave, cowboy. Oh, yeah? Come on, get on the way. You can't do this. Well, he's doing it, isn't he? Come on, have to take that gravel now. Get it moving. Get 
And you want to see me, Blake. Get out of the country, Baldwin, and get out quick. Not until I get the buzzard that shot Rennie Williams in the back. I'll lay odds that you can put your finger on that man. Meaning what? Just this. I'm giving you till 8 o'clock tonight to name him. And I'm giving you till 8 o'clock to get out of the country. Savvy? 8 o'clock then, eh, Blake? Yeah. Eight o'clock. Be sure and wind your watch. Please don't go. You'll only walk into a trap. It's come to a showdown, Miss Ruth. And I'm not backing out now. Don't you understand? They'll kill you just like they did Ranny. I figured on taking that chance. Please, Miss Ruth. I've got to stop him, Maggie. By riding through Eagle Pass, I figure I can beat him to town. I'll see Blake myself. He can have the ranch. But oh, Ruth, please. Get up out of there. You count me out. I've had enough of this business. I have quit. I knew you were yellow. Now you quit when I tell you to. You tell me nothing. I know too much. What do you mean? Would it help your standing if people learn that you shot Randy Williams in the back? Where's Paul? He's on his way here. That's what I came to see you about. Yeah, well, you're too late now. Don't! There he comes.
for my answer, Blake. I want the man that shot Randy with him. You're looking at him now. I ought to shoot you in the back, the same as you shot Randy. But I got a better idea. I'm gonna try to skin you alive. Turning yellow, huh? I reckon you won't be having any more trouble now, Miss Ruth. I got you four or five good hands, and I think they can take care of your place all right. I'll be drifting along. Drifting where, Sim? Oh, I don't know. Anywhere. You see, I've always been a drifter. Never staying in one place very long. Do you really want to drift this time, Sim? <laughs> <laughs> 